Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements text effects video, we'll be looking at how to put a picture inside of some type, just like that. It's really pretty straightforward, but there's a couple things you want to understand on how to do this properly. Okay, let's just squeeze this down a bit and get that to fit on screen. There we are. So, as you can see here, just a few layers, not a whole lot on this. And I did a couple of additional things. I had a little gradient in the background there. It's a custom gradient. And of course, a little highlight right there. I'll show you how to do all, this, all these steps. Let's start off with a new file. Go up to File, New, Blank File. And we'll set this one at the default Photoshop element size, which is 6x4 at 300 pixels resolution. Choose OK. There we are. Now, you can bring in the picture you want to use inside of your lettering either before or after you put the lettering on it. It's really up to you. But if you already know what you want to use, you might as well go ahead and put it inside of your file at this point so it's ready to go. So I have one already selected. And it's right here. It's simply a nightscape, a night picture of some city. I don't know which city this is. But it's you know maybe Singapore, Hong Kong. I don't know. I, th I think it's one of the uh, Oriental cities. Any case, simple picture. I have a link for this in the description, so you can get that same picture, or just go to the download page. I'm just going to grab the layer here and drag it like that. Now notice that this is too large for my image. It's I'm not seeing the whole image, and I want that specifically. I'm leaving it as is because I want to have a lot of image here to put inside of my lettering. So that's fine. That's all set to go. I'll just go ahead and, and hide that one. Okay, back out, down into the background layer. Let's choose or put our colors here at the basic default setting, foreground, background, black and white. Click on the default button right there. And let's choose a typeface. Now, any typeface will work. You want something that's really big and fat. For instance, this one will work here. The Bauhaus 93 regular, that's pretty good, big and fat. If we scroll down a little bit, there's the Berlin Sands FB Bowl. We'll be using this one. Now, I admit the main reason I chose that one is just because it has a city name on there. It happens to be a big, fat typeface, but it has a city name, it seemed to fit. Any, anything, though, with, with a lot of black on the text, it gives you some place to put your image inside of. So you want a real fat one. If you're using a thin lettering like that, you won't really be able to see what's in those letters. So pick something with a lot of black on the lettering. So I'll choose that one. And then we can start off with, I don't know, somewhere around 60 points. We'll adjust the size here as we go. So there we are. I'll leave it at bold so we keep it as, as, as fat as possible. And just click onto the page. Any old place. And we'll just type in city and choose OK. Now we're going to make this larger, so I'll grab this side, the little corner here, and let's just pull that out and get a pretty good size. I won't go clear to the edges, I have a little bit of breathing room around that, but there we go. That's about right. I'm just eyeballing the size. There's no specific size on this. If you want to be real exact, let's just see what this came up to. It'd be 139, so 140 points on this example, but I'm, again, just eyeballing that. So there's our text. We have our text. We have our city. Let's now put the city inside of the text. This is real easy to do. You can put anything you want inside of the text. Just have your text layer like that. Put your image above your text layer. Let's just show that image. Put the image above the text layer. Go up to that layer. And then layer create clipping mask right there. And what that does is it uses the shape of the layer underneath as a mask to show the layer above. This will work with any shape. It doesn't have to be just 
text, you can use these shape tools over here. Or you can go over to your graphics and use shapes on the graphics. You know, anything that's a shape, just, just make it black so it's easy to understand. But any of those things, you can go ahead and just put an image inside just like that. Now, one of the nice things about having this image larger than my text is I can now, if I'm on this layer, I can grab this image and I can move it around like that until I find a look that I like. So it gives you some flexibility in here. I'm just kind of you know pulling around seeing what what looks good. I kind of like that blue coloring in there. That's kind of fun. So I think right here somewhere, let's see, there's the tops of the buildings. So come down into the buildings. So there we go. It looks pretty maybe this bit here is not quite as as nice as I'd like. There's the edge of the picture as you can see there. Let me go back over, over here. So I still have my blue, but I don't have any in between building areas showing. So there we go. So you can just move that around. You can resize whatever you want to at that point and then fit your text inside of your letters. That's really all there is to it. It's just that clipping mask. So, so your text or a shape, image above, click on your image layer, and then layer and create clipping mask right here. If you it's already in the clipping mask, you can release that by clicking on release and it just goes back to the way it was before. Okay, layer create clipping mask. So that's the easy part. This now makes us look a little bit nicer. We can do that by adding a bit more to this. Let's first put some styling on the lettering itself to make it look a little bit more interesting in here. And actually let's do something else first. I'm going to put a, a gradient in behind. We'll do a gradient first and then we'll come back and we'll put the styling on the letters in just a second. The gradient will help the styling show up better. So there's our background. I'll make a new layer here and on this let's go to our gradient tool click on edit there it is and in here there's this kind of a chrome one right there so here's our chrome gradient I'm going to show you now how you can modify this you can actually change the coloration in here you can change the colors on these different stops click on a stop like that you can change your color you can change the position by dragging it back and forth which change the changes the effect of the gradient or you can remove those just pull it straight down and just pull them off and that's all I want to do I want to leave the blue and the white from that chrome gradient take everything else off so it's just the sky part of the chrome and choose OK now down here let's click on the first option this is the linear gradient and I'm going to pull straight down from the top to the bottom now it draws the gradient from the left to the right side. So your first click will be left hand side color. Your right click is the right hand side color. And you can click outside of the image if you want to. So I'll just click, pull it straight down. You'll try to get this you know, pretty straight. It doesn't have to be exact. And that, that pulled it backwards. Let's see why. Okay, reverse is selected. So I'm just going to undo gradient. Make sure we have reverse unselected. There we go. And I'll pull that again. And there it is. There's our kind of a, a sky arrangement. Now let's go back to the city and put a little bit of detailing on this. We'll use layer styles for that layer. Layer style, style settings. I'll first put a drop shadow, which will help give us some separation in there. And we'll pull the distance out a little bit on this drop shadow. That looks pretty good, somewhere around 25 or so. Just enough so you can see that drop shadow in there. And then I want to help separate this edge a little bit around here from the background. So I'm going to add in a glow on it. Let's just do an inner glow. I'll leave the default color of yellow, that's fine. And let's just make this glow a little bit larger here. Let's just bring it up a little bit. So you can go real far if you want to or just a bit I think right about in right about there's pretty good 27 30 in there somewhere just enough of a glow to kind of pull that edge off of the background and choose OK so there's the basic city and the effects on that let's just pull this 
down a little bit. Let me come onto the city line here. Now use my arrow keys. I'm just going to bring everything down just a touch. Like that, I'll bring the inside down as well. About to there. Okay, just a little better visual spacing on that. Now let's go a bit fancier and we'll put in a bright highlight here on top of the T. Now I'll be using for that one a filter up here, filter and render, and it's called lens flare. Now you can put a lens flare right onto a layer, but it doesn't give you a lot of control that way. You can put it right on, onto the image. Let me show you how you can have control on that lens flare. We'll make a new layer up here. Make sure your foreground color is set to black, which it is. Choose the paint bucket and click in here. We'll fill the whole layer with black. Now that we have that, we can put a lens flare on this black layer. So filter, render, lens flare. There we go. There's four kinds of lenses in here. A 50 to 300 zoom, 35 prime, 105 prime, and a movie prime. So that little, little X, little, little plus sign, you can actually pull that around and change the position in here if you want to. I think that looks pretty good right about here. I'm actually looking at these things outside and the positioning of those things compared to this. That's what I'm caring about right now. We'll reposition this in just a bit. You also can adjust the brightness here. So you have a lot of control on this thing. Choose OK. And it gives us a nice lens flare on the page. Exciting, but we can't see anything any longer. So let's now use our blending modes up here to blend this layer with everything underneath. And the one you want to use is called screen right there. And it actually hides the black part and shows everything else. You see there's the lens flare. Now because of this I can actually move that lens flare around. Now you can see our little dots in there and the dots up here. That's why I was looking at those dots. I want to make sure those dots are kind of in a nice position. Now, as I move this around Let's see, here's the edge of that picture right there. And you can see up here how we're having transparency in behind that edge at this point. So we'll take care of that in just a second. If I click down here, you might be able to see just a little bit. You can see right there, there's a little bit of a line in there because of that edge. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'll change this back to normal again. I'll grab my eyedropper tool and I'll grab the coloration right there just at that edge and then paint bucket and click just outside and I'll fill that with that bit. Now down here is not an exact match as you can see it matches good up here doesn't match down here I can't fill this again because I just did that and if I you know, chose a different color here it would be too dark up there so I'm just going to paint this to match. Go to my eyedropper tool click in there that chooses that color. Go to my paintbrush tool and let's set the size up so you can see that that's pretty good. And I'm just going to paint in here. Should I grab the eyedropper from the wrong spot? I want up here my black area. There we go. And then paintbrush. And that works. So I'll just paint out that little bit of a line in there. So it's no, no longer showing. Just kind of softens that out. And I'll go back to our screen mode. And there we go. There is a picture inside of text and a few more things tossed on top of that just make it a little more fun here for this video. Let's just bring us up in size a bit. Magnifying glass and there we go. Image inside of text with a few additional embellishments. Now again the whole trick here is using the clipping mask technique to use the one layer as a clipping mask to show through the other layer. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 
training video.